Hey there, it's Mazzy here. So apparently you're, you're visiting and you're watching this video because either uh, you're a record collector, you're a music collector, you um, like to watch over the top unboxing videos, which I never do really, uh, or you just want to see uh, a big crash, burn, explosion of a massive over-ambitious, gigantic, multi-component, cash-grab, over-the-top record release uh, from Paul McCartney for his archive series. And this is about Flaming Pie. Flaming Pie is an album that uh, Paul made and put out in 1997, and it was his first solo album after uh, he had uh, completed the Beatles anthology that was shown and uh, came out in 1995. So, I'm a Beatle completist and I bought the collector's edition and this is what I'm gonna open up for you. Again, I don't usually do unboxings, but it seems to be people are really curious about this one. I've read on Beatle forums and record forums like the Hoffman and on Facebook groups and all kinds of groups, how people are saying, McCartney, you, you're rich, why should we pay so much for these records? What a cash grab, what an expensive thing. I just want the music, I just want, you know, I don't want all the parts and pieces, I don't want all that crap that I have to pay for to buy this. How dare you? I've been supporting you for decades, for years, forever. I've been supporting you and you do this to me now, me? Well, <laughs> um, I get that. Everyone takes it so personally, or a lot of people take it personally. Now, here's how I look at it. First of all, do you know what archive means? The word archive? Well, it's an overview of work, of a person's work, collective pieces and parts and documents and in uh, literary contributions, in this case, uh, musical contributions through photographs and artifacts. This whole series is the Paul McCartney archive that's been going on for some time now. Now, Paul McCartney, each time they put an archive, there seems to be a massive uh, variety of options that you can get this. You can get as simple as a two CD set, or lately with the uh, vinyl uh, revolution and revival, you can get a two record set or beyond. So you don't have to buy this massive overblown, over the top, humongous, gigantic collector's edition. There's a deluxe edition. There are, there's a three record set. There's a two record set. There's a, a double CD. Now, the proper album originally came out again in uh, 1997 as a single LP and a compact disc. At the time, uh, the LP was about 50 minutes, which is a long, uh, a lot to put on one record. If you are a vinyl person and you know about dynamics and grooves, you want to space it out. The more music you put on a side of a record, the less dynamic is and the quality really kind of uh, shrinks somewhat. Although the original copy of um, Flaming Pie wasn't that bad, but the, the, the copy you buy now on vinyl, the main record is spread over two LPs. So the dynamics, the sound, in theory should be better. I haven't listened to it yet. I will be doing that. Uh, the three record set includes some of the bonus material, as is the, as does the two record set, and on and on and on. Now, since is this is a boxing unboxing video, this is going to go on for a friggin' long time. So get with the program. And if you've never watched a a, a boxing video, uh, well, then this is going to be a little different. I do things a little different here. I tend to be a little snarky, a little cynical about things, but I love music. I love the Beatles. I love McCartney. I know what goes into the production of these things. And people say, oh my God, it's a $600 box. Well, there was a universe, uh, you discover sale, 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 sale. So I actually got it substantially less than that. It almost 
God, 30 to 40, 35% off that. But that's still a lot of money, granted. And the deluxe, same thing. People get upset. Oh my God, Amazon didn't discount it this time. You Discover didn't ship my box yet. McCartney doesn't need the money. How dare you take my money? You know, I'm, I'm on Social Security and I can't afford it. I'm on Social Security, okay? I have my priorities. And I get it. I get it. Not everyone can afford this stuff. We all uh, do with what we got and what we can. But I love that there are options out there. Going back to the archive thing, how I see this, yeah, some people say, I just want the music. Give me a download. Give me, you know, high res. Give me low res. Give me, I just want the music. I want all the songs. You can get most of the songs. Maybe certain things you can't get, but an archive, and I'm finding this and discovering that this, these archive uh, sets that McCartney p puts out are not just about a particular record like Flaming Pie or Wildlife or Band on the Run or something. McCartney is, and, and it might be something about as he's getting older and everything, he is archiving his life around the time he puts out these records. So as these boxes expand, as they grow, he has photographs of the time. Obviously, a lot of these uh, were happier times when Linda was alive, his wife, uh, Linda. A lot of photographs that Linda took. Uh, she was a wonderful photographer and, and a, a partner of Paul's. Family life, uh, lyrics and, and, and sketchbooks and all kinds of parts and pieces that you'd see in a museum show. So in a way, these archives are very much like a museum show, uh, representing the years around the particular release of an album. So I look at it that way. Now, in terms of the cost, they are expensive. I deal with production a little bit and photography and design, and I've worked in advertising, and, and I know what goes into these. So if you look, you get on with this already. You can, you can skip through and see the boxing part if you don't want to hear my uh, diatribe about this. But think about it. There's designers, there's researchers, there's copywriters, there's photo researchers, there's photo retouchers, there's licensing of things, the things that are not part of MPL Paul's company, they have to license. They have to get interviews with other artists and producers like Jeff Lynn in this case, or Steve Miller, or uh, musicians who played Ringo Starr on it. Uh, there's designers, uh, there's a lot of different designers. There's the mastering of the music uh, of not just the original album, but mastering of the outtakes, demo sessions, transferring that. There's um, designers, as I said, production people. There's printers. And when these sets, there's a lot of parts and pieces. So look at all the collating that goes into these. You might say again, I don't want all that paper crap. I just want the music. Well, okay. So anyway, it goes on and on and there. Plus, there's marketing promotion costs and then obviously profit for the retailers and uh, the artists and publishing costs. Just because you pack, uh, you have a 10 songs or 20 songs or 30 songs, every time you add bonus things, you have to pay more in the publishing. So a lot of people don't understand all these layers. But yes, I bought John Lennon and it wasn't as much and I bought, you know, the box by the pretty things or the or Oxy Music and it wasn't as much. Well. There probably is a, a McCartney Beatle factor. I bought Abbey Road and it was cheaper. Yeah, I get it, but this is not that, okay? It is a collector's edition in this case. It's gonna be expensive, it is limited, they pay less. Also, physical buyers, the buyers of physical uh, releases has gone way down. So many of you out there probably wanna stream. Maybe you're just watching this because you wanna see it and you can't get it or don't wanna get it. So. Mazzy's going to do an unboxing, and I'll show you as much. I won't get into the music. There's a lot of other videos and a lot of uh, things you can read about uh, and reviews there. So here we go. This is one big mother of a box. Now, I did already unseal it. At the very end, you're going to see a few uh, images. And FedEx literally left it on my front porch, on my steps, in the middle, not even trying to hide it. They didn't ring my door bell, and I didn't notice it for about a half hour. I was sitting out there, an expensive set like this, ready to get stolen or soiled or something. So here we go. It says the artist Paul McCartney released Flaming Pie, collector's item, number 1436. 1436. 
Some more light on you. Okay. And over here, it says CDs, vinyl, DVDs, books, miscellaneous, has a whole listing here of what's inside. So, without further ado, we don't want to rip this. You know how this is. We'll put that aside from now. This in slow motion, wouldn't would you like to see this really slow without me talking? You can probably do that on your end. Ooh. Ah. I present to you these ten commandments. Now, for size comparison. <laughs> Here is the regular sized archive boxes. This is a copy of RAM with the uh, sort of linen like cover. Size doesn't matter, but look at this. Oi, oi, is this thing heavy? This is like the Ten Commandments. This is Five Commandments. This is McCartney's Commandments. So, it is all in good shape, a blue linen. It's got a glued on uh, inset photograph of the cover, of the wide cover. This is a Polaroid transfer that Linda took. Uh, that's a process where you use, you uh, rub on from the Polaroid uh, art product, product of photography uh, when, especially this time, Polaroid was still being made, Polaroid film. That's why it looks like it's a Type 55 frame. Type 55 is a a, a, a type of Polaroid uh, that a lot of photographers, uh, commercial photographers and fine art photographers would use for proofing, but also a lot of fine art photographers would use the Type 55 as the negative and print from the negative. Actually, this may not be a Polaroid transfer. It might but it might just be the Type 55 uses a negative and printed full frame and then uh, sepia toned or, or split toned or selenium toned. That's a, a, a darkroom process that um, photographers work with. But you didn't come here for a photography lesson. You want to see this piece, of, this puppy. So, oh my God. Ugh. I do collect art books too. That's another reason I collect the Genesis books. So I am a big fan of art and the physical design and the physical aspects of uh, music and packaging. So again, these aren't for everyone, but uh, I am a collector of that type of work. You see in some of the photo books, that's a Helmut Newton, a sumo book of his work. I've been collecting these over the years because I am in the photography business. Okay, there is a um, little letter by Paul. Some people feel that the, this should have been um, really autographed. It's a facsimile. You can't see that. It's too little, too bright here. But you get the idea. Okay. We have a folio here, a portfolio. Folio portfolio of artwork. This is why I don't usually watch unboxing. <laughs> is it going too friggin' long, right? Okay. Limited edition art prints photography by Linda McCartney. This is what I love. I collect photography. I have original photographs by the likes of um, Jim Marshall. I uh, have um, Barry Feinstein did a cover of All Things Was Past. I have Robert, um, 
Freeman, who did uh, five or six of the Beatles covers, including With the Beatles, Rubber Soul, Help. I have, um, anyway, a lot of fine art photography, signed prints by various photographers. So these are, I'm, su I'm assuming these are digital prints on watercolor paper. They, they call them glacé, but glacé is just a French, fancy French name for digital prints. But they're beautiful. Mm, you can kind of smell the um, printing, the ink still. Suitable for framing. So you see how limited edition, I, mean, I have actually bought one of uh, Ringo's photographs, signed photograph that he took uh, way back in Beatle days uh, when his book Photograph, uh, Ringo Starr came out. So I'm going to carefully leave those over there. Don't want to step on anything now. I should be wearing white gloves, uh, linen gloves with this like you do with fine art photography. But um, okay. Now, oh, well now, there's the pick, the elusive pick. I have a friend who couldn't find his pick on his deluxe version. The pick's right there. This is a slip cover, and this has the uh, LP, the regular LP, the triple LP. Oh, it has the regular LP. It has Paul McCartney's home recordings, and it has the Ballad of the Skeletons, Allen Ginsberg, Paul McCartney, Philip Glass, Lenny Kay, Mark Rabot, Dave Mansfield. Very avant-garde, artsy. Interesting piece of music. I have the compact disc. Uh, I bought it when it came out. I bought it in New York when I was visiting there once. So, um, of course, you want me to open everything, don't you? You want to see this. An unboxing is supposed to show you everything, so I don't want to disappoint you. Meanwhile, I can't wait to read all the comments about cash grab. God damn it, Paul McCartney owes me everything I paid for the last 60 years. Get off my lawn, yell at an old man, yells at clouds. <laughs> oh my God, there's a record. What's the difference with the, okay, here's the difference with the, the release and the record. And I mean the release, the, uh, the three LP version, and then this version without all that extra type. <laughs> Oh. This came with the other record as well. These are all the lyrics to uh, all the songs here. Beautiful package, beautiful design. Think of all the printing, the layouts, the copywriting. Separate here. Has the track listing on a separate sheet. I think I'm going to have to watch this video after to, <laughs> to figure out how to put everything back. The Ballad of the Skeletons. Now, this is embossed. This is gorgeous. Just the design of this and the layout of this. I mean, these things ain't cheap. But Paul McCartney owes you, so you should get it cheap, right? The Ballad of the Skeletons, Allen Ginsberg. If you don't know Allen Ginsberg, he was one of the um, ama be amazing beat poets. Obviously, a friend of Bob Dylan's and uh, part of the um, the beat movement uh, that Lawrence Ferlinghetti and City Lights books. Uh, his most famous uh, poem in the late fifties uh, was called Howl, H O W L, and uh, he got um, taken to court for obscenity for that in the in San Francisco back in the day, and he won his case. So, 
I'm a big fan of uh, the beat movement. Obviously, being born in San Francisco, you know, born in uh, the mid 50s, obviously too young to experience that firsthand, but love the artistic side of the beat movement, the beat poetry work. So, Allen Ginsberg collaborating with someone as commercial as Paul McCartney, who was those of you who follow Paul and Paul's work was very into the avant-garde in the 60s and way before John and Yoko met, he was part of that whole movement. He's the one that got Richard Hamilton, the fine artist, to do the cover of the White Album, uh, which was a brilliant, uh, brilliant move on that part. But I digress. Okay, now we're gonna show some books here. Whoa. I just don't know if things are gonna fall out. Gorgeously put together, stitched, saddle stitch, just called saddle stitching, in terms of the prints. This with Steve Miller. And most of you know that uh, the song My Dark Hour uh, from 1968, Steve Miller album was just Steve Miller and Paul. Paul played drums and sang background. You know, lyrics. I'm trying to go slow so you can see everything. The worst thing on these unboxing videos when people just go like this. See, he did this video and that video. Come on, show the friggin' thing. Let us see it. I know you can freeze frame it and you can stop. Beautiful ball. And then there's another. This sound feels like it probably has the CDs in it, yes. CDs, DVDs. High res download card. I'm not gonna go into every CD here um, and tell you everything, but there are outtakes and let's see, here's a little booklet that probably gives you uh, the listing of these. Uh, this also has the lyrics. So it's sort of a mini view of that larger book with the flames on the cover. He actually talks about each song. Talks about each song of the Ringo, when Ringo was there in the studio. It's a little a mini essay that Paul wrote. Who wrote the song? It was with Jeff Lynne. You know, Jeff Lynne had just come off working with... Um, we had worked, obviously, with George Harrison several years before at the end of the 80s uh, with um, the Traveling Wilburys, of course, uh, John, excuse me, George Harrison's Cloud Nine, but then he worked with the Beatles on the two uh, collaborations with uh, the late John Lennon. You know, whether, whether you like those or not, I think it was an interesting experiment. Free as a Bird, Real Love, um, I enjoy it, you know, for what it was. And it was a, a nice tribute and fitting for the end of the anthology series, a little extra bonus for fans. You know, some people think it's sacrilege working with dead artists and taking songs and re-recording, but I think they did it in a true nice spirit. And um, I think Free as a Bird works pretty nicely in a certain way. That's my opinion. You all have your opinion. And some guy can rant down there and say, God damn it, those money grabbers, all they wanted is my money. Get off my lawn, you mud. Okay. Now we got internal mail, a little folio. What is this about? Inter-office memos, flaming pie corrections. Let's see what's in here. You, know, you could be outside playing right now instead of watching this friggin' video. Ooh, lyric facsimile. Just think of all the separate printing different types of papers, collating, you know, all the 2,000, are there 2,000 or 3,000 of this set? I can't remember right now. But paper on um, some kind of stationery for Little Willow in his handwriting with corrections. Uh, 
a riff I will come to you. Come, oops, anyway. And he changes the lyrics on the end here and makes some changes in notes. I won't get into your, everyone. And then on, again, these are like the Genesis books. If you ever seen the Genesis books, there's parts and pieces, different sizes, different cutouts, replicating the original um, paper. I know this is just school, you know, lined paper, but you have to collate, believe me, just collating alone, uh, an inspection takes a lot of uh, time, which adds to expense. So, you know, you don't need this stuff. Nobody needs it. It's an archive. It, it's pulling together that period of time in Paul McCartney's life where he made uh, Flaming Pie. Flaming Pie is an interesting album. It's a good album. It's not even in my top five McCartney albums, but um, of course, Paul's doodling, sketches. And more lyrics, okay. And again, as I said, they have to change and, and spec out different paper stocks and colors to try to replicate the originals as, as much as possible. Flame, flaming hot, one made pie. Replica of this kind of promo newspaper. I know you asked for it. I've had people ask me to show this on the Hoffman forums, on Beetle forums. So I want to show you as much as possible here. And then you can just yell out, you know, God damn it, how dare Paul get time to take my money? You know? I realized during the pandemic how much money I've saved actually, staying home, not traveling for work, not traveling for personal, no, no gas, no restaurants, no bars, very few martinis at outrageous prices or dinners or burgers or whatever. Now, Club Sandwich, I have a collection of these. I don't have the entire collection. This was uh, the name of Paul's fan club, uh, the Wings Fan Club, the Wings Fun Club. And I do have, I didn't collect it at this late period in time, but this came out several times a year. I can't remember if it was a quarterly or biannually. I think it changed over the years. But uh, this is a, a replica of Club Sandwich, the Flaming Pie issue. And uh, I have uh, these in a box somewhere. And I'm not gonna pull them out, but it gives you an idea. It's articles that Paul and, and some of the band members of the different uh, periods in Paul's touring life, and people he worked with, notes from Linda, uh, who plays on what various things. So it's, it's a, it's a kind of like a, a, an updated uh, fan club newsletter. So a replica of the Flaming Pie Club Sandwich edition of Flaming Pie, summer 1997, issue number 82. And then there's now again, another thing they had to spec out and print out like the original. Uh, this is one of those notebooks that you write lyrics in, and it says, Sans si book. Let's see what this is like. Ah, is it blank? Oh, there are some things in it. Flaming Pie, Paul, Ringo, Jeff, Fender, Telecaster, 1969, left uh, something channel, Paul, Black, Ludwig, Black Beauty, Talks about the songs on the album or the, or the placement in the recordings. Uh, it shows a, a separate photo of that loose, that again, more collating costs. I think that collating is why this thing is so expensive. It's like the Genesis books. You know, those Genesis books are like five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars uh, and they're collated and they do about 2,000 copies. So I understand why these things cost what they do. More notes of McCartney. Little Willow, Paul and his Martin D28, an uh, old one, a uh, Capo F sharp, Capo's F sharp, the AC30, which um, is a Vox amplifier, uh, Red Axe, Boogie Pedal, Blues Channel, 
Paul. Anyway, it talks about the different uh, instruments he uses on different songs and everything. Again, here's a copy of a Fender Rhodes and uh, looks like a harpsichord and his keyboard array. Look at that. That's kind of cool to see that in his studio. Some Days, the Martin D28. Beautiful guitar. Uh, Paul bass, wah-wah pedal, Paul harpsichord, uh, anyway, it goes on and on. Uh, Ringo, let's see, Paul piano, Ringo, Black Ludwig, Black Ludwig, mmm. Paul Hoffner bass and a boogie amp, Ringo, Red Taylor, Red uh, Tambourine, and here is uh, his guitar during the session and piano. So, I think that's about it. Um, again, the Paul McCartney Super Deluxe Collector's Edition Cash Grab Over the Top Too Expensive How Dare You Paul McCartney Charge So Much Collector's Edition with a Flaming Pie guitar pick. And um, I think that's it. So, Thanks for watching. Put your comments in here. I totally get if it's not your bag and you think this is a ripoff and everything, but you know, I'm a, uh, a fan and a collector of fine art. I understand what goes into these things. Uh, aside from just, uh, I mean, I don't do these to buy, to flip. I never uh, resold anything. I have things that have gone down in value. I have, I'm not just talking about Beatles. I have things that have gone up in value. Um, but I do it because I like the pleasure out of it. And, you know, as I get old in age, my son will have all this if he wants it. And if not, uh, I'll start selling in, in some years. But um, I really appreciate you watching. If, if you're just visiting here the first time, I do a lot of videos. I have a, a playlist on various Beatle uh, videos, Beatles related, but I, I'm a record collector. So there's a lot of videos on jazz, on uh, record labels and art and design of record covers mostly all related to music, a few uh, other uh, things of design that I do and, and occasionally some movies. I do a, a series called Whack-A-Mole, which I, without looking, I randomly pick five records from my collection. And uh, if you can handle the snarkiness and, and you might get turned on to some uh, new music too. I do new releases. So it's not just, I'm one of those old guys that doesn't just, oh, it's only the Beatles and it's only Bob Dylan. I like, a lot of new music and if you go through these videos you'll see that too so again Mazzy loves you please subscribe I'd love to have um, some uh, new viewers and uh, hope you enjoyed this video a little different take on the flaming pie Paul McCartney flaming pie collectors overpriced wanker give me a break how can you charge so much mega cash grab edition Mazzy loves you and we'll see you next time